You know that Kamnicker name, when we do something, boy do we do it. What is up, everybody? Uh, it's been a minute, so sorry for that, but I've been a little preoccupied with, what would you even call this? Some circumstances that I'm about to share with you. I wish that I was kidding on all of this. Cross my heart, I'm not, but it is what it is. So, here we go, buckle up. So many of you know, some of you may not, that I've been dealing with some health uh, stuff lately, some cardiac challenges, and we have officially come to a diagnosis and a plan, which I'm very grateful for, weirdly enough. A few weeks ago, I did a cardiac CT scan where they did a big CT scan of my heart and injected a dye into it to really see the arteries and everything that was going on, which revealed something called myocardial bridging. In a traditional heart, you have your arteries and your arteries lay over um, around the outside of your heart, nice and fluid. They have good blood flow. And in myocardial bridging, one of your arteries ends up getting stuck inside your heart's muscle. It grows inside the heart's muscle. And so the heart's muscle fibers actually pinch the artery down so that as the heart beats, it compresses the artery blocking adequate blood flow. So that is what bridging is. So after that, we were referred right up to Stanford. I was up with them within a week for an angiogram. So they did a procedure where they threaded a catheter through my femoral artery in my groin that went way up into my heart for them to see everything that was inside those arteries, what was happening inside my heart, all that stuff. I was awake for this. It was very unpleasant. I will do you the favor of sparing you the details. I will tell you it was not a good time. So what the angiogram revealed was that I had a pretty significant segment of bridging. So my bridge is pretty long. My artery in general is very narrow. And I also am having what's called coronary vasospasms, which is essentially just spasms inside there. So all three of those things are kind of all working together against me not playing nice with each other in the sandbox, as I like to say, causing an explosion of excitement inside my chest cavity. On top of those three things, I also have been having uh, what's called PVCs, premature ventricular contractions, which is something with your heart rhythm. Um, from what I understand, it's just kind of like an extra heartbeat and a regular heartbeat. When I have my episodes, I track my heart rate on my watch because I have the newer Apple watch that does ECG readings, which is really cool. And so what those show is instead of my heart rhythm looking nice and beautiful like this, it looks like these. So what do we do about this? What happens next? First and foremost, I have been scheduled for open heart surgery on January 20th. With myocardial bridging, um, there's a couple things that they can do. You can try meds, depending on the severity of it. Sometimes the meds help, sometimes they don't. It takes a while to figure out which ones work that we just don't really have the time or the patience or the desire to do right now. It's just not the best option for me. The other thing is surgery to do what's called an unroofing, which basically is sort of dissecting the heart's muscle fibers from the artery to free up the artery 360 degrees so that it's no longer being compressed. So that's what we're gonna be doing. The surgeon that I have has done the most of these surgeries with bridging than anybody else in the country. It will be up at Stanford. So I am quite literally in the best hands that I possibly could be. This guy is best of the best. There's not a 100% guarantee that this is going to completely resolve all of my symptoms. The vasospasms that I have are not known if they are being triggered by the bridging or if they're just an independent thing because people can have coronary vasospasms completely on their own as an independent symptom in itself. So 
There's not really a guarantee that those will completely go away. However, the surgeon did say that after the unroofing surgery, they've seen an 80% improvement in people that have vasospasms and just general symptoms. It also basically allows the medications that you're on to be a lot more effective. So that's the good thing. I am on nitroglycerin twice a day. That's been helping to keep the vasospasms at bay. So that's good. I've also been asked by Stanford to be a part of their research team, which is super awesome. I feel like one of the cool kids. So I am part of their research team on myocardial bridging, specifically not relating to blocked arteries because my arteries are not blocked. They're completely clear and healthy. Um, so I am a part of that. And I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not being compensated for it. I'm not being paid for it. I wish that I was. Um, but because... The research that they're going to be doing with my information and my body and things like that does not require me to go in and do any additional procedures or anything that I wouldn't already be doing. Uh, I'm not getting any other money, so, but that's okay. It's really cool to be a part of it. Um, I felt like really honored, weirdly, to be asked. So they will be just taking my information, my history, you know, my labs, all that good stuff to use for future research of, you know, this condition in general. So that's fun. So like I said, open heart surgery is scheduled for January 20th. I've been working with my personal trainer to develop a plan, a very detailed plan. Up until then, I have four weeks to kind of train and prep my body. I'm gonna try and go into this in the absolute best tip top shape that I can so that I have just a really strong body going into it and hopefully have a much easier, much quicker recovery. Um, it will be five to six days in the hospital and anywhere from six weeks, probably absolute minimum to three months, hopefully maximum of recovery time after getting out of the hospital. Um, they said that about four weeks, you really turn a corner and most people feel like 80% better. So I'm hoping for a speedy recovery. I think that because I'm, I'm very young, I'm very fit, my athletic build, like I think that it's going to be relatively quick. I'm hopeful. I feel good about it. I feel pretty good about it. Of course, there's days of emotions and being scared and things like that. It is kind of a big deal. I really don't think that it's quite hit me yet uh, of what exactly is about to happen. I made the mistake of doing some research on what to expect for open heart surgery and I should not have done that. So do yourself a favor and don't do that. There's been something in my eye for like 36 hours and I can't do anything about it. I feel hopeful. I feel good about it. I'm in the absolute best hands possible. I could not have dreamt up a better support system, a better environment. My work is amazing with it. My family, like everybody is just at the ready, ready to do what we need to do. Um, and it's as severe and unfortunate as the situation is, it could not be going any better. I feel good about it. I feel very optimistic and hopeful and grateful that I'm in the position that I am of being able to get it fixed. And um, this should completely fix the problems, if not at least give me you know, a better quality of life and making sure that my heart is taken care of and healthy. After the surgery and after I'm healed, I will be able to return to everything that I wanna do, being better, faster, stronger, and you know, return to races and all of that good stuff. So like I said, as severe as the situation is, and as much as it sucks, I'm in good hands. There you have it. I wish I was kidding. I promise that I'm not. I'm gonna go finish my coffee. Get out there, be active, even if you don't want to, do it for those who can't, play in the rain, and I'll see you next time.